everyone, this is Teresa from Base 10 Montessori, and today I want to go over how to introduce the bead chains. Now, I am AMI trained, so today I'm going to present it to you as I was presented in my training. So in AMI, the way we present bead chains the first time is with the 100 chain. And when we present the 100 chain, we're simply going to start with linear counting. So we start with the 100 chain, then we move to the 1000 chain, and that's how we start linear counting. And after that, once they start getting the hang of that, we'll start doing the skip counting presentations, which starts with the five chain. To start with, you need to have a tray. And on your tray, you're going to have your 100 chain. You're going to have a 100 square. And of course, you're going to have your numbers for counting the 100 chain. Once we've stretched out our 100 chain, we're going to start at the beginning and we're going to remind the child where they've seen this material before because they've already been introduced to the 10 bars. We have introduced that through the decimal system. We have done the formation of large numbers. We've gone through the teens and tens boards and now we're starting the bead chains and they've seen this material before. So you can remind them where they've seen it before and you can also ask them to count how many units are in the golden bar. So that very simply is how we start this lesson. Now, the part I love about this lesson is this next part. When we show this lesson, we're not just gonna start counting. We're gonna show the child where they've seen this material before, but in a different formation. So let's start by moving our 10 bar like this. And we're gonna say to our student, you know what? I wonder how many times we can fold this golden bar together on the 100 chain. Let's see what happens. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, when we fold the 100 chain up, we can fold it 10 times. Does this remind you of anything? And of course, this should remind them of the 100 square, which we've already introduced in the decimal system. So get out your 100 square, place it next to it, and you can show them that the 100 chain is the same as the 100 square. And if you hadn't noticed, this is an indirect lesson for squaring. All the short chains in the Montessori system are an indirect lesson for squaring. And when you get older, when you get into elementary, they're going to become a direct lesson for squaring. And then the long chains will be a lesson for cubing. So we don't want to get into this big lecture about squaring and cubing here. We just want to show them that this folds up 10 times. And when you do that, it looks the same as the 100 square. So this is 100 and this is 100. They're the same. So after that, you would take the 100 square and you would place it at the very end of where your B chain would be, which for me is off camera. But what we're gonna do next is my second favorite part of this lesson. So we're gonna separate out this first bar again. Don't forget to put your finger down, hold it. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna stretch it out. So when you get this 100 chain out, and you've put the 100 square at the very end, and then you're gonna start back at the beginning, and you are going to open your box of counters, and you can help them organize their box. Now, we want to have these in a random order, but for young kids, for kids who might be struggling, it's okay to help them organize their work just a little bit more accurately in a way that they can actually finish the work. So if you notice that they're struggling, you might wanna separate a few out and say, okay, let's just put the first few over here and then move these other ones over and we'll worry about those later. So if they're really having a struggle, it's okay to separate them out and just have them work with a smaller pile to start with. Just start out by counting as usual, all the way to 10, which is gonna look like this. And then they can keep counting, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 
We don't have units going through the whole thing. But an extension you can do is have them write their own numbers on pieces of paper, cut them out, and put them there if they're interested in it. So once we have this finished, once all the tabs have been placed, we are going to count them. So we're going to go through and we're going to read all the numbers. So we're going to read 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. So we're going to read it out. And once we've read it out in order from lowest to highest, we're going to start with 100 and count backwards. And if you're like me, sometimes you can sing this in a song to help them remember just a little bit better. Or if you're not very musically inclined, you can just do a little bit of a chant because these have a rhythm to them. And when you can do something with a rhythm, with music, they will remember better. And this is really helpful for children who are struggling. Some children will get this, it'll be too easy for them. But that's not every child, right? And we need to adapt to children who don't learn easily. And using music and rhythm is one way to do that. So just keep that in mind that even though it's not in my AMI album, to do a little chant, to do rhythm, to do music or anything like that, it's always a possibility if that's what the student needs. Once you've moved through the 100 chain, which may go quickly, it may take a long time, but once you've moved through it, you can go on to the 1000 chain. So we're going to go from 100 to 1000 pretty quickly. We're going to do that before we get into any of the other bead chains. Now, when you introduce the 1000 chain, you're going to introduce it with the 100 chain. And the reason why we do this is because, first of all, we want to show how the next lesson is similar or familiar to lessons that they've had before. So we always remind them of what they've done before, what's familiar about this lesson before we introduce something new. So this is what we call an isolation of difficulty. We're taking what we did before and we're building the next step onto it. So once we've got our 100 chain set up, we're going to set up the 1000 chain. And before you get into the lesson for the 1000 chain, you need to have a lesson on how to pick up the 1000 chain and how to put the 1000 chain back on the hooks. I was always taught to put these rings on your hand just like so and carry it. However, that still makes this very, very long. And I have still seen these being dragged on the floor, even though the children are trying their best to hold it on their hands, just like this, and let them dangle. So it may not work for you. This might not be quite how you want to show it. You may want to show them how to put it on a tray. I am going to leave this up to you because I know every environment is different. Every student is different. Every teacher is different. And I would encourage you to just experiment with a few different ways and see what works best for your classroom. Because at the end of the day, you need to have materials that are not broken and you need to have children that aren't afraid to pick up the materials because they're afraid that they're going to trip on them or break them, right? If your students are afraid to use the materials, if they're intimidated to use the materials, if they're getting yelled at for not being neat enough with the materials, you're going to discourage them from using it. So what we really want to do is have a positive experience with these materials. So think through how you want to present getting this off the hooks and back on, because that's going to make a big difference in whether or not they're going to actually do this lesson. Now to start this lesson, we're going to take the 1000 chain and we're going to stretch it all the way out. And I know for some classrooms, this is really difficult because if you're in a small space, there's no place to lay it out. Sometimes I've had my students work in the hallway because they need to stretch it out and see what it looks like the entire length. Ideally, if you can do this, that's the perfect way to start. Once they've done that once, I'm not too fussy on whether or not it bends or swirls or however you put it out, but for the first lesson, I do like to make these as straight as possible. So once you have your 1000 chain set up in a straight line, we're gonna start by doing the same thing we did with the 100 chain. And that is going to be to fold our golden beads into squares. Now, because this is 1,000 and not 100, we're going to need a lot more squares. How many squares are we going to need? We're going to need 10. So when you present the 1,000 chain, you need to make sure and have 10 squares set aside. Because every time we fold it into 10, we're going to place a square. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, eight, nine, 10. And as soon as you get to 10, you're going to place a square. 
and you're gonna keep going. Place yeah. another square right there. And you're gonna keep going with this process until you get the whole chain folded up into 10 squares. And once we do this, we can ask the child, how many squares do we have? And we'll have 10 squares. And when we have 10 squares, we can bring something else out. After we have 10 squares, we can show them that it's the same as a cube. Now they've seen this cube before. We've worked with this cube in the decimal system. So they're very familiar with it. So this cube is gonna go at the very end of the chain with the tab that says 1000. So once you get your chain all set and you get your cube all set and we've folded the chain up into 10 squares, we're gonna do the fun part again, right? And we are going to stretch it back out. So once we've done the 100 chain, the way we've always done it, we introduce the 1000 chain by folding it up into 10 squares and then introducing that the 10 squares are the same as the 1000 cube. We're gonna set up our chain in a straight line if you can. We're gonna get out our box of counters. This one does have the green unit tabs. You're gonna count to 10 and you're gonna put your 10 counter right here, 20, 30, 40, and they're gonna go the whole length of the chain until they get to 1,000. Now, this can be intimidating, right? This is really intimidating for some children. You may have to help them organize it. I've seen teachers do this in a lot of different ways. Some divide them into separate containers and they have a basket full of containers for the 1,000 chain, and they have them put into different sections. Like here's a container of uh, zero through 100. Here's the container for up to 200, right? So you can divide them up, you can help them organize it, or if you want, you can just let them sort through it and see what they do. And just like with the 100 chain, it's important to invite the child to read the labels. We're gonna read it forward and backwards, just like the 100 chain. So really the 1000 chain is exactly the same as the 100 chain. The only difference is we're using more squares. And of course, we're introducing the 1000 cube and showing that this big, huge, long stretched out chain is 1000, just like this cube. So as you can see, we've done the linear counting and maybe even skip counting. The child might naturally start skip counting with the tens. They might start doing that pretty quickly with the 100 chain and that's squaring and we have a square. So even though it's indirect, we're using the language of this equals one square. And with the 1000 chain, we're showing that it's a cube. So we're showing indirectly squaring and cubing. We're not teaching it formally. We're teaching it indirectly by using concrete materials that show this is a cube. This can make a cube. And so we're associating these numbers automatically with squaring and cubing, which is going to be very important when you start getting into those elementary lessons. Once you've introduced linear counting with the 100 chain and the 1000 chain, you can start introducing skip counting. Now for skip counting, we start with the five chain. So you're gonna need the five chain, the five square, and of course the box of numbers. Now we're gonna introduce this the same exact way that we introduced the 100 chain. And we're gonna mention that to the child. We're gonna say, you know, this really is gonna look exactly the same as the lesson we had on the 100 chain and the 1000 chain. So what was the first thing that we did? The first thing that we did was we started to fold this. We folded it once, twice, three times, four times, five times. And of course, it looks the same, doesn't it? So this is the same as the five square. And we're done with that. Do the fun part of pulling it out, right? So when we do that, we're gonna place that there at the very end. We're gonna take out the numbers and we're gonna show them how to start counting. I don't tend to do the units when I'm doing skip counting, so I'm just gonna put these aside. We've already worked with the 100 chain. We've worked with the 1000 chain. They're understanding that pretty fluently. So the five chain for them should be pretty easy. And again, if you're tying this into multiplication, if you're tying this into squaring and cubing, it's really important that we can say we've done five one time, two times, three times, 
four times, five times. So this is five, five times, and it's the same as a square. And what is five, five times, right? We're gonna find that out. We're not gonna tell them. We have to count it, right? So we're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, right there. And we're gonna keep going. And maybe at this point in time, some of your students will have that skip counting down for the fives, at least for the short chain. So they're gonna easily just go through it. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, right? That's really easy for them. Move on to the long chain, but don't forget to fold up your chains and say, okay, we've got five, five times, that makes a square. And if you're doing the long chains, you're gonna keep going until you've made a square of every single uh, part of the chain, and that should equal a cube. The language of multiplication of one time, two times, three times, four times, five times, place a square. This should really help them start seeing this in terms of multiplication in an indirect way. If this is easy for them, if they moved pretty easily through 100, 1000, and then the five short chain, go to the five long chain and start that process again, just like the 1000 chain. And then they can really move on to any of the chains they want. And honestly, their favorite is often the one when they can figure out that the short chain for the one and the long chain for the one is one. And that's the same as the square and the cube of one that's usually they get a kick out of so the one chain don't overlook it that one's the most fun so anyways that's all i have for you today i hope this video has been helpful if you have any questions if you have any comments leave them down below and i will be sure to get back to you and of course if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up like share comment and subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next video